Blender is an open source 3D computer modeling and rendering tool which can be downloaded for free. It can be downloaded from here at Blender's webpage www.blender.org. So, to recreate my first computation model, you'll first need to download and then install Blender. Once installed, run Blender and then in the splash screen under New File, select General to create a new composition. We are presented with a new composition with a light, camera and cube. Go ahead and select the cube by clicking on it and let us delete it. We delete it by pressing X which brings up the delete menu which we then select and the cube goes away. We want to define an animation sequence long enough such that we have enough time to see the behavior of the model. We can do this by going to the timeline at the bottom and changing the end frame to say a thousand. That should give us a reasonably long enough animation. Now we are going to define the source of our particles for the model. As we are modeling a star going supernova using particles, we need the particles to start in the location of our virtual star. We define our virtual star as a simple sphere. We add a sphere to our composition by selecting the Add menu, going down to Mesh and selecting UV Sphere. To make it easier to see inside the sphere, let us switch to Wireframe View. This can be done by clicking the Wireframe Viewport Shading button in the top right corner of the viewport. Next, we define the particle system. This is done by selecting the sphere and bringing up the particles tab. Create a new particle system by selecting the plus tab to the empty list on the particles tab. Once clicked, the particles tab is populated with all the controls to define and control the particles. The first setting we want to set is the emission. In essence, the particles define the matter of the star which already exists. For this reason, we want to define all the particles in the model to appear at the very beginning. We do this by leaving the frame, frame start at 1 and set the frame end to be 2. Thus all the particles are spawned in the first frame. We also want the particles to last the entire course of the animation. So we set the lifetime option to be equal to the number of frames in the animation, which is 1000. We also want to start off with a small number of particles. This allows us to run and animate the model in real time without overloading a computer. As a good starting point, I'll set the number of particles to 10,000. Let us view the animation by pressing the spacebar key. We can play and pause the animation by pressing the spacebar. To, to restart the animation, simply press shift left arrow keys to place the current frame back to the start, then press spacebar to rerun the animation. If we do it now, we see the particles fall away from the sphere. The reason they all fall down is because of gravity. In Blender, gravity is a universal force. By default, Blender models the action of things as they are here on Earth, so the particles fall downwards. As we are only interested in the magnetic force field interaction with the particles, we need to tell our model to ignore gravity. We do this by selecting the field weights, tab in the particle settings. As you can see, gravity is at the top and set to 1. Go ahead and set this to 0. Now, if we restart the animation, the particles are blown outwards evenly in all directions. The fact that the particles are blown outwards by, is by default, seeing as we are modeling a nova. 
The model begins by the particles being blown outwards as in reaction to the neutrino core bounce event that is the actual trigger mechanism of the supernova event. The actual particle setting, settings that control this behaviour can be found in the velocity ta tab. Here, the particles are given a speed of 1 meter per second in the outward normal direction away from the sphere. Also, let us give a starting velocity by setting velocity to 0.5. All other settings are zero. However, the particles are starting from the surface of the sphere. We want the particles to begin inside the volume of the sphere. To do this, we expand the source tab in, in, inside the emission tab, select the vo select volume from the emit from option, also select random from the distribution option. By default, the random order and even distribution checkbox are ticked, which we leave checked. So now when we run our animation, we see the particles being blown out away from the sphere in all directions. Now that our particles are defined, let us define the magnetic force field that it reacts to. We do this by selecting the Add menu and choosing the magnetic option from the force field submenu. We don't want the magnetic field to be at the origin but close to the north pole of the sphere. With the viewport selected, press N to bring up the viewport options. With the magnetic field selected, we go into the item tab, such, such that we see the transform properties. In the object's Z location, change this from 0 to a value of 0.75 meters. Now, if you run the animation, we see the particles evolving into a twisting jet with different layers emerging from above the North Pole. It is almost forming concentric layers, but not quite yet. Let us go ahead and set, set, the, set the values for the magnetic field. We'll give it a strength of 2, and we'll set the power to be 0.6. We'll set the power fall off to be 0.6. And let's rerun the animation again. There, you can see a ni nice concentric series of twists. We're not quite forming into concentric circles quite yet. In order to get the distinct concentric ring formation structure, we simply need to blow the star up a bit more completely. We do this by defining a single force field point at the center of the sphere that acts as the explosive repulsion force of the supernova event. So select the Add menu and choose Force from the Force Field submenu. This defines a repulsive force which, whose direction is out in all directions from the normal. Check the gravitational checkbox to apply a square inverse proportionality relationship such that the effect of this force decreases the further a particle is away from the origin, just like gravity. Now, if we rerun the, uh, rerun the animation, we see the particles act like, like they're being blown out, out more. Now, if we rerun the animation, we see the particles act like they are being blown out more explosively away from the central sphere. But then the real magic begins to happen, as the majority of particles are then affected by the magnetic field. Coming from the larger distribution of particles, a jet forms surrounded by a number of consecutive layers. However, it is a bit hard to see the details of the overall pattern. To see better details, let us go up into the particle settings again to increase the number of particles. So select, select the sphere and open up the particles tab again. Let us set the number of particles to be equal to 300,000.
We also need to decrease the render size of each of the particles to make them out. So in the particle settings tab we expand the viewport display section and set the size to be equal to 0.02 meters. Trying to view the animation will now be slow given the massive increase in particles. What we can do is bake the physics simulation to a cache, which can then be played back. To do this, we first need to save our Blender composition to, to a file. Select File, Save As, and using the file browser, save it to an appropriate location. Once saved, go back to the Particles tab and expand the Cache section. Check Disk Cache checkbox. This will cache the particle simulation to disk in the same location as where you just com saved the composition. Now click Bake All Dynamics button and wait for the simulation to be computed. Once computed, run the animation and watch the dance of particles as they form a series of concentric layered set of vortices with a central jet. If you got this far, congratulations. You have successfully reproduced a numerical experiment which shows the main features that is the Big Bang Hypernova Hypothesis.